Let's begin with establishing what exactly is content-led SEO. It is a strategy where you write high-quality copy that is helpful and optimized to rank on search engine results pages, or SERPs. Building topical authority through carefully chosen content is also a key focus with content-led SEO. Now, before I move along, I want to define some key terms relevant to content-led SEO. First, what is a keyword? Keywords are words or phrases you type in a search engine to find answers. For example, if I wanted to look for a scheduling tool, I may search best scheduling tool on Google. If I wanted to know who won the Oscars for best actress in 2022, I would search best actress Oscars 2022. However, some keywords are more popular than others, which makes them more valuable. What is a topic? I like to think of a topic as a more ambitious form of a keyword. Rather than trying to rank for one phrase, you attempt to rank for all phrases related to that keyword with a group of content pieces related to the topic. For example, if I wanted to rank for the topic of shedding in soul, I know it wouldn't be possible with one piece of content. So I would conduct research to find other words related to the main topic, such as Social media scheduling tool, best scheduling tool, group project scheduling tool, what is a scheduling tool, how to use a scheduling tool, free scheduling tool. When writing these content pieces, I will link these topics together using hyperlinks to show the relationship between each content piece. Some might say potato potatoes and they are not wrong, but we're moving away from keywords to topical authority and it's important to get in that mindset early. We will cover topical authority in more detail later, but for now, think of it as developing and organizing related content pieces together to demonstrate to search engines that your brand is knowledgeable on this area and that you provide extensive information on the topic. Now, let's get back on track. How do you lead with SEO when creating content? Remember, the goals of content-led SEO include creating helpful content that can drive traffic from search engines, rank for keywords, build topical authority, improve internal linking. So let's run through the six steps needed. Step one is determining your audience. You need to conduct audience research to determine who is the right audience for your content. A few ways to discover your audience include analyzing the market, industry, or competitors with the same rush want to target tool. Conducting market research like qualitative research, such as surveys and focus groups. Social media listening, which is observing and studying discussions on social media related to your company, sector, and topics linked to your company that enables you to gain an insight into your audience and make your content and marketing tactics better. Check your audience analytics on Google Analytics to learn more about who is currently engaging with your content. You can discover their age group, location, and other demographic information. Okay, on to step two, conducting keyword research. Once you know your ideal buyer, the next step is to identify what people search for when looking for a solution. To find a keyword, think of a word or phrase you would search in Google or Bing around that problem or solution. For example, if I wanted to find a tool to help me schedule meetings, I would search meeting scheduler. With that being said, let's pop over to SEMrush and use the keyword magic tool to see if this keyword has a decent monthly search volume. Let's click on SEO on the left side of the dashboard and select the keyword magic tool from the drop down menu. Enter the keyword meeting scheduler in the provided box and click search. We want to see the search volume for this exact keyword and in this exact order. So click on exact match. You can see the keyword meeting scheduler has a monthly search volume of 5,400. The exact match also shows you other keywords that contain meeting scheduler that you can add to your keyword list. Another method is to type in the keyword in the keyword overview section. You'll find this feature on the left side of the dashboard under SEO. There are several features on the results you'll see next. If you're doing keyword research for a product or service that isn't location bound, you can use the global volume in the middle as it shows search volume throughout the world. If you're doing research for a location-based service, you can filter the keyword information by country. I've set the results for the US. The keyword difficulty tells you how difficult it will be to rank for the keyword. 
the higher the percentage, the more unlikely you'll be to rank for that keyword. The intent tells you the search intent for the keyword. An informational keyword means the user is either at the top or middle of the funnel and they are searching for information or constructing a decision. An example would be mountain biking benefits. An applicational keyword means the user is looking for a particular product or website they already know about. They are searching with intent to go directly to that web page or website. An example is brand X mountain bike or brand X mountain bike under $1,000. A commercial keyword happens in the consideration stage, right before the user is ready to make a purchase and need help deciding. An example would be best mountain bikes. A transactional keyword is a money keyword. The user is ready to make a purchase and has narrowed their options. Examples would be mountain bike shop near me or buy mountain bike. Finally, we have post purchase keyword, which is rarely talked about, but a great way to build customer loyalty. It's content you create to encourage repeat purchases, help your customers get the best out of your product, and solve issues they may encounter. Examples would be mountain bike gear, bike problems, and mountain bike troubleshooting. Trends show how search volume changes over time. As the global search volume of 16K is high, it's unlikely you would rank for this keyword if you run a small website or don't have a lot of existing content around the topic. In which case, you want to find a similar keyword with the same intent, but with less competition. Looking at the keyword information, you will notice that the question section shows keyword with the least difficulty. So I'll click on view all to see if there's a profitable keyword with low competition and reasonable search volume. This will take us back to the keyword magic tool, which we just looked at. A great tip to hasten the process is to look at competitors and see what people search for around these brands for which we can use the SEMrush Keyword Gap tool. So let's stick with the keyword of meeting schedule as an example and assume that our client is Savical. I'm going to enter them as the first domain. We get to also add three competitors to compare. Now, SEMrush does a good job of auto-generating competitors in your market, just in case you're not sure who to target. I'm going to go ahead and add Doodle, um, Colander, Calendly, and I would also like to add Chili Piper as our final competitor. Now, the location is set to US by default, but you can change it to your country location if you want. And I'll click compare. I'll scroll down to all keyword details and you'll find information for shared, missing, weak, strong, untapped, unique keywords. I like to start with missing keywords because it shows me all of the keywords that my competitors rank for, but I don't rank for. So once I'm here, the next thing I can do is to decide on what type of keywords I want to be targeting. If I'm doing research for bottom of the funnel keywords, then that is what I am going to be picking. So I can decide to export um, commercial keywords, high volume keywords, or keywords with the least difficulty. And I can filter the results by word or phrase to narrow the list of keywords and make it easier to choose a topic. For example, a word associated with bottom of the funnel keyword is free. I can narrow down that results and then click everything here and add it to a keyword list. Since I haven't created a keyword list, I just come down here, click the plus sign and type a name for my project. And I'm going to use Savical just to make it easy to remember. And then I click this and my keyword list has been created and all of these keywords have been added. All right. Another word associated with bottom of the funnel is the word best. I click that and I add all of the missing keywords in there to my keyword list. I can also look at untapped keyword to see what my competitors, not all of them or one or some of them have are ranking for but I don't rank for and add that to my keyword list. Best productivity apps, best planner. Um, yeah, let's just pick three of this and add it to our keyword list or savvy car. And now once I have all of those keywords, I can come in here and export my list. Click. And that's it. The list has been exported. Now, on to step three. 
cluster your keywords and group them with search intent. A long time ago in the land of SEO, you could write one piece of content, add the keyword twice on the page, and that would be enough to rank on search engines like Google and Yahoo. However, search algorithms have evolved, and today you need more than one piece of content or keyword placement to rank for a competitive keyword. We call the group of contents a topic cluster. Let me put it this way. Rather than writing one piece of content that only ranks for a keyword, you can rank for hundreds of keywords where you build your topic cluster correctly. A few benefits of clustering include build authority for the topics you want to be known for, improve your internal linking structure, provide content for the user wherever they are in their search journey, avoid covering the same topic twice by grouping subsections correctly. To create a topic cluster, export your keyword research into a CSV file. It might feel overwhelming looking through a long list of keywords, but don't worry, I have a strategy to help you make sense of all that information. Let's start by looking for commercial and transactional keywords at the bottom of the funnel, your BOFU keywords. BOFU keywords signify that the visitor is either contemplating a purchase or is ready to convert. If you're writing for e-commerce, your commercial pages include keywords like discount code, promo code, coupon code, product pages. If you're writing for a digital product, your money pages include keywords like demo, free trial, pricing pages, product pages, personalized landing pages, best X tool. If you're writing for a location-based company or service-based business, your money pages would include keywords like keyword X services, keyword X service in London, how much does keyword X cost, what to look for when hiring keyword X, how to choose the right keyword X, best keyword X in the US. For example, if the keyword were SEO agency, a money page would be tech SEO agency in New York, what to look for in a tech SEO agency. Once you have your money keywords, move on to the middle of the funnel. People use multiple keywords when they're in the consideration stage and weighing their options. Examples include downloadable offers, such as a case study or white paper to help them make a decision. Free templates, best X keyword, competitor pages such as brand X alternative, brand X competitor, or brand X versus brand Y. Reviews, personalized landing pages mentioning the target audience. Examples include meeting scheduler for project management or scheduling tool for education. Finally, you have top of the funnel or TOEFL keywords for people who are still learning about the topic and need beginner-friendly content. Examples of TOEFL keywords include what is, how to, tips, strategies, mistakes, versus keywords, and checklists. As you group your keywords into funnel stages, be careful to avoid keyword cannibalization where you have multiple pages with similar search intents. I like to manually plug each keyword into Google and use the search results to group all related keywords with similar search intents together. All right, so let's assume I've done the keyword research. I have taken all of the keywords I needed. I've put it inside this keyword manager and I have exported everything into this Excel spreadsheet. Now, I want to determine how many pieces of content I need to create to rank for the keyword of content writing tools. So what I usually do is that I can take the top keywords here, the top keywords at the top here, and then I can search for them to see if it's possible to rank all of these different keywords, keywords with one page, or if I need different contents to rank for different keywords. So let's use this keyword of best free content writing tools. You can see HubSpot here with Spotify free content writing tools. Um, let's see what else again. We're just looking at what we're seeing here in terms of sites that are ranking and what we're going to see across the other keywords, similar keywords. So I can see Brandwatch, Content Assistant, Blaze Today, HubSpot, um, LinkedIn. Yes, all of all these sites ranking. Now let's look at content writing software. We can also see um, Content Harmony and HubSpot and Copysmith. These three websites are also here. Oh, but yep, Content Harmony and HubSpot are here. So that tells me 
right off the bat that this keyword, best free content writing tools and content writing software, I can rank both of them with one piece of content. Now, can I also do the same for this keyword of websites content tools? Okay, is there any website that I've seen before that is also here? Yes, I can see HubSpot is here too. So if I see even one or two websites, that already tells me what I need to know that I can rank this page. I can rank that keyword also. I can rank all of these three keywords with the same page. So I'm going to group them together and make sure that I mention the keyword. I use them in the subheading. I use entities related to them in the content. Maybe I built some backlinks using them as anchor text, whatever I need to do to get these three keywords to rank with the same page. Now, what about AI content writing tools? When I look at AI content writing tools, yes, I don't see the same contents, which tells me that if I want to rank for AI content writing tools, I need to be creating a separate piece of content. Now, as a rule of thumb, you want to write the cluster first and the TOEFL keyword last. That's because TOEFL keywords have a ton of search volume and competition, which makes them harder to rank for. MOFO and BOFO keywords have less competition. The pillar page is the final piece of content you write because it ties the entire cluster together. Moving on to step four, create a content outline. Let's assume you've done the keyword research and you decided to start with best meeting scheduler. You're not going to start writing off the top of your head. No, you need a structure to guide you. This structure is what we call a content brief. It will detail, metal information, internal linking, the content outline, external links, and semantic entities. Meta information for your content includes meta description. This is a brief text describing the content. It should be actionable and include the primary keyword. URL slug. The URL text is usually the primary keyword or a variation. Page title. This is the title of the article or web page. You want it to be descriptive, simple, and punchy. Aim to include the primary keyword in the page title and keep it under 66 characters. Word counts. The length of the article is based on the content outline and what you plan to cover. A good tip when determining word count is to look at the SEP and review the length of the top ranking contents. Content outline. The content outline is the meat of the brief. It's all the subheadings you plan to cover when writing. You can break down your content outline into H1, H2, H3, and H4 subheadings. Subheadings. The H1 subheading is a title. H2 is the first subheading. H3 and H4 is the explanation under the subheading. Semantic entities. These are words and phrases that provide context for the keyword and help search bots understand the page when indexing it. It's a noun that describes elements around the primary keyword. So, how do you determine what goes into your content outline? Thankfully, you can automate parts of the process of creating a content brief with SEMrush SEO content templates. On the left side of your dashboard, click Content Marketing and select SEO Content Template to find this feature. Enter the primary keyword. Let's stay with our example of Best Meeting Scheduler. And SEMrush also generates a detailed content brief for you. The brief includes SEO recommendations like SEP analysis of the top competitors ranking for the keyword, semantic entity recommendations, readability score, text length. If you click on Real Time, it redirects to the SEO Writing Assistant, which is a helpful resource to ensure your content is optimized for search engines. More on this later. When creating your content outline, remember to do it with empathy in mind. What do you know about the reader? Where are they in their search journey? How much information do they have? And what do they need to know right now? So, review competing content and look for recurring subheadings that you can add to your brief. Add a logical next step you want the reader to take. Brian Dean's skyscraper technique is a great method to get started. But don't add to the echo chamber by regurgitating what already exists. Think of how you can go deeper with more context, more helpful information and actionable tips the reader can implement on their own. For example, if you review the top ranked content for the keyword of best meeting scheduler, you'll find recurring subheadings like features to look for in a meeting scheduler and best meeting scheduler for X function. Remember, your content outline should tell a story. Make sure you provide context for the overarching topic 
with the first H2, then go into details with the H3. The fifth step is to write the contents. People assume that writing for SEO means stuffing content with keywords arbitrarily. In reality, it couldn't be farther from the truth. You can use SEO optimized content to create a compelling argument, appeal to readers that prefer a conversational style of writing, help Google understand your content, and provide value to the reader. Now, let's run through some tips to help you write content optimized for search and the user. Write a compelling headline that entices the reader to click through. Add an offer to your headline to get an edge over competitors. Where possible, add secondary keywords in H2 and H3 subheadings to help you rank for more keywords. Break text with images, sentence variety, and bullet points. Add alt text to your images to rank for Google image searches. Adopt storytelling to engage your audience and hold their attention. Each sentence should connect with the next. Avoid disconnected sentences that break the flow and do not add value. Avoid fluff. Find the shortest route to communicate value. Write like you're having a conversation with someone. Web content is not academic content, so use easy to understand words. Teach your reader something new that no one else has mentioned. They should come away feeling like they've learned something. Use semantic entities as anchor text to link internally to relevant content. Use Google's People Also Ask to answer questions in paragraphs. The final step in this process is optimize. When you finished writing, copy and paste the content into SEMrush Writing Assistant. The readability score shows how easy it is to read your content. There may be exceptions to the audience, but usually, a good practice is to keep the score under 65% for the most part. SEO shows if you've used the primary keyword and semantic entities in the text. You will also find recommendations for anchor text and possible link issues. You can check your text for plagiarism with the originality feature and use the rephraser to rewrite plagiarized sentences. The tone of voice shows whether you've maintained a consistent tone. It also reveals problematic sentences to rewrite for clarity. Once you've implemented the suggested recommendation, the next step is to self-edit. I advise you to edit ruthlessly, cut words that don't add value, rewrite unclear sentences, and ensure every paragraph has flow. Have you answered the question for each subheading in a way that fulfills the reader's intent? Look for grammatical errors and ambiguous words that require a dictionary. Finally, read the text out loud. If you run out of breath when reading a sentence, it's too long. If the word makes you stop and think, find the simpler synonym. When you're satisfied with the text, check that you've added all the meta elements in step four. Then, read through the text slowly and look for words or phrases you can use as anchor text to link to existing content or the websites. Internal linking is just as important as backlinks. They help to provide context to the reader and the search engine. They also encourage readers to spend more time on your website and guide the reader along the buying process. Think of a claim or sentence you've made that could be supported with statistics from a reputable website. Put in the work to find the original source of the stats and avoid linking to websites where you can't verify authors. You can reference thought leaders or industry experts known for sharing credible content around the topic. You can also share statistics from known competing websites such as Statista or editorial sources like the New York Times. Here's an example. Word count is a highly debated topic in SEO. So, I reference credible sources like John Muller from Google and an original study by HubSpot to support my claim. Okay, let's recap. Content-led SEO involves using content to flow your SEO strategy. It begins with understanding your audience, doing keyword research to find profitable keywords, grouping and clustering the keywords based on search intent and user's journey, creating a content brief, writing the content, and optimizing for search engines. Now that you know what is content-led SEO, I'm going to see you in the next video so you can learn how to create a content marketing plan. Oh,